Hi, it's Simone Stewart from Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This program is aired on the Mercy and Truth Network. We go live on Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. or 8.30 p.m. your time. Um, and on Mondays, we have our repeat at 3 p.m. local time or 4 p.m. within the environment. Welcome to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. This program is about women, for women, and by a woman. We focus on the trials and triumphs. We focus on the struggles and traumas and the victories of our women. On set with me today is Latanya La Kenlock. Hi, Latanya. Nice, nice to have you. you. Nice to work. <laughs> Thanks for being on set. Well, uh, this unique woman of God was born in Maxfield Avenue, a childhood, what I call prayer warrior, one whom is said to have gone to war 21. But I will not jump there. I will allow her to tell you a little bit more about herself and then we'll dig in. So, woman of God, share with us. Where are you from? Tell us a little about you. So I grew up um, in Maxfield Avenue. That's 35 Maxfield Avenue, Kingston 13. Mm -hmm. I was a very avid reader. I was a, I was a great reader. I, I loved reading. I love being a, around mature person that some that somehow brought wisdom to my intellect. And um, I was always a very curious person, curious mind. Mm -hmm. So I like to I like to ask questions and to receive answer. And I just like to be inspired. Wow, wow, being inspired. And no wonder she is also an author. But Latanya, I want you to share with us now your childhood days. Were you know growing up with mother and father? Tell us about that aspect of your life. Well, growing up without a father mm -hmm. was rough. It took a toll on me in some point because I felt like I was experiencing rejection. Mm -hmm. And now we all know what it, rejection is like. For some of us that have no father around. Mm -hmm. So my mom now she's in Maxwell Avenue. Mm -hmm. In fact, she she didn't grow up in Maxwell Avenue. Mm -hmm. She came from another district that was they have, that did have car back in that time, a residential area. Okay. So my father met my mother when he was on a bicycle with one of them bridging them say, Oh, have a look abroad in fear, you know. <laughs> and he meet her and you know them get for like each other and them had a little flex and there comes my mother coming down into Maxwell Avenue, so she was never from that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So my father, no, he was an eagler. He was the one that was out there trying to fend for my mother. Mm -hmm. At that time, we, we were, I wasn't conceived as yet. Mm -hmm. And he left and he somehow went overseas because that's where the bus came in Maxwell. They say, you get a bus, mm -hmm. like a fly out. And my dad told me that he, 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 never, he, ne he never wanted to leave, but because of the hardship in Maxwell Avenue yeah. and the, the stigmatization to say yeah, you haven't reached and acquired anything in life, so therefore overseas will, will carry forth that wing. Mm -hmm. So, but my father, my father didn't know that he clipped our wing. Wow, wow, interesting. Talk with us, share about it. He clipped our wing the day he left when I was eight months and my sister was one. Mm. He... He didn't know that my mother wasn't in this, the best of frame of mind to grow two wonderful, lovely children and added another third one. Mm -hmm. And she went in an abusive, abusive relationship yeah. where she was being, she was having, they, they, she was experiencing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this traumatized me a lot. And this actually ha allowed me to be a prayerful young girl, very prayerful. So let me ask you, was at any point in time were those abuse um, extended to you and your siblings? No, none, none whatsoever. Okay. In fact, it was all she was always being um, abused because of sex. Oh my God. Mm. Okay. So, all right. So, in talking with you earlier, you had shared that your mom had an illness apart from that that would have taken her out of your life a few years later. Share with us what took place. Well, in 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 regards to her illness. She in 2008 she succumbed to an injury. It was like it was so phenomenal. I don't know where this experience came from, but I remembered when she came to me at the at the house and she said she went downtown and someone saw, saw her and stopped her and said, "There's a dark cloud over here. 
over your life, over your head right now, and you're going to seek so bad that no one can be able to, to help you. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was living, because she used to move about a lot, you know, so I was living in a different um, avenue. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to her, that's a lie. From the pit of hell, that's a lie. Um, what she's selling is not right. And mm -hmm. I believe if she's going to speak into your life, she speaks something that is positive. Mm -hmm. Now remember, mom, people can come as a witch any farm and mm -hmm. come speak to you. Why would you receive that? And she mm -hmm. shouldn't know, but some, some, somehow she felt fearful. And I can tell you, Simone, I prayed, I fasted, and I wasn't a person that was active in church. I didn't mm -hmm. go to church, in fact. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about church, but I knew something about praying mm -hmm. and how much God answers prayer. Yeah. All right. So did that, whatever they call it, a prophecy, was it fulfilled? It came to pass because of fear and because she didn't know who Christ was. Oh, wow. Oh. So she died. She died. And the doctor said it was a um, blood, blood vessel that burst in her head. Mm. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. On set with me is Latanya Kenlock. We are talking about her childhood days. And you would have just heard her sharing about her mom. Someone just walking up to her, telling her that there's a dark cloud over her head. And the next thing we know, this woman is sick, now to death, and is now dead. But... Let's talk a little bit more. So we, we, I remember in talking with you offset, you know, there seemed to be what witchcraft basically that seems to be a lot in your family. But I, I don't want persons to get it wrong. So I want you to talk about it. Why would you say or why would you allude to the fact that witchcraft basically um, envelops your family, if that's the word? Okay. Well, many persons... Um wouldn't understand when you said an envelope witchcraft and all that. They might sound kind of cliche to them, something that sound like, it, you know, it's, it's like it, it never exists, but it did exist in my family. Mm -hmm. So in my family, um, my great grandmother was like a revival. She was in the occult. She was a part of the demonic entities. Mm -hmm. And somehow it, re it went down in the bloodline. So... Mm -hmm. But did you know that at that time that it was witchcraft, you know, that kind of revival kind of thing? Never knew about it, never experienced revivalism, none of that sort. In fact, I was just more so about the passion of God mm -hmm. and what God wanted for my life. Because I, I, I went to a, a kindergarten school that was Christian based, so everything was was um was around Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, um, just listening to you, it, it's it's confirming the fact that for teachers in schools and or Sunday school teachers, don't take your responsibility lightly, right? Because here is this woman sharing that the only Jesus you ever really encountered in your childhood days was what you got from school. All right, so I remember you shared a, an incident too about your aunt and the pictures you want to talk about that sure i would love to speak about that mm -hmm. i remember when we were about 11 or 12 years of age i i had to move from maxillum because um gun violence was taking place there and my my family was initially in the war orchestrated in the war in fact mm -hmm. and he said to my my mother you have to take my cousins up to my his mother house and then we had to stay there for a while and because of the safety of us we had to go and I didn't want it to go because I knew who she was and, and what she, she was like. In fact when I went there I prayed and said God whatever it is that is troubling us, I need you to expose it. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I when we were there and you know my you know child children are they, they sometimes become very curious mm -hmm. of things. And I remember when my sister was wandering about in the house and she pushed the door and she saw three candles on the dresser. One with my picture um, behind it, with a thick cam candle. Mm -hmm. One with my cousin, and one with, one with my sister. All three of us had pictures. Mm, my God! Did you ever discover what what that was about? Did you ever confront your aunt? On 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 that before that matter, I was I was I was like astonished. I was like, "Never born on that house, No man. <laughs> so you were a little warrior. <laughs> I was a warrior, and I've never confronted my aunt, but my sister did last year, and mm -hmm. it shook the family up overseas. Mm -hmm. And my my uncle started to 
publish it. Listen, this is for real, and they're not making it up. You have, you have, you have tormented your life from there young, and you don't understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I haven't confronted her on it. I believe just as all my grandmother, she, my my um, one of my family members told me that my great grandmother had to confess of all that she had done on her last. She was bedridden. She was bed. She had sores all over. Mm -hmm. And I believe I want to give the Lord that kind of opportunity to release her, and not for me to um, orchestrate it or, or to permit it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny that uh, um, Latanya, you're talking about something that is very prevalent here in Jamaica. A number of persons have um, tried to say, "Hey, it doesn't exist." But the reality of the matter is that witchcraft has existed for years here in Jamaica. We've called it, we've called it all kinds of names. We've called it revivalism. We've called it mother woman. We've called it all kinds of things. And the truth is what it has done is that the Bible calls it sorcery. And it has sown some seeds in our lives. And whether we want to believe it or not. But I, I really want to hear how God brought you out of it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Stay tuned. You're going to be hearing some more of this woman and how God delivered her out of these circumstances. And we'll hear further what has happened with her family. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Welcome back to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. On set with me is Latanya Kenlock. We are talking about her childhood days and the whole matter of witchcraft and sorcery, for want of a better word, here in Jamaica. Yes, it is real. Uh-huh. It is real. And here is someone who has had first-hand experience with it sharing her experience uh, with it well latanya um the i want to talk about the whole just di us digging now into you moved now as a child so you moved up and you're now an adult but between yourself and your siblings have you seen anything that sort of resemble seeds that were sown from then that has affected your life most definitely um, I remember before I I had to oh my God, I had to pray for my siblings because my sister was resonating something that was like my aunt. She would always speak word curses over people and didn't realize that they were curses. And I kept saying, mm -hmm. be careful of what you speak unto others because the Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So mm -hmm. be careful how you're using your tongue. And the Bible also establishes that, listen, if you can't hold your tongue, you need to bridle it. Mm -hmm. So I had to tell her, you listen, you need to bridle your tongue. My God. With my brother no i i um in fact his grandmother was a part of a revival church so i had to break necromancy i had to break coming as spirits i had to break all different kind of powers that was rooted in his bloodline so in, in fact you're realizing that his two sister one brother mm -hmm. but we're 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 a part of a, a, a genealogy that mm -hmm. needed to uproot and it's just it's just funny that it has because um, your brother is not from your, it's not your father's no, child. No. So it's really coming from your mom's line. Well, the, all the connections to your mom, basically. Um, how did the Lord bring you out of it? Oh, my God. I, Simone, I was just a lost soul, lost, mm -hmm. that regained my true identity in Christ. Wow. And I have to give him the thanks and all the glory and all the honor. And if, if I had if I had not sown those seeds of prayer that was that was bottled up into heaven and became you no know, a, a, a memorial for us, because I believe that we're living the memorial of the Holy Spirit. All that I've been praying for 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 um for God to just move and to shift. Mm -hmm. 
I remember Simone times when my, when barrels and suitcases were coming down and we couldn't get it first hand. Mm -hmm. I had I had to pray for God to intervene here to say, God, let it come to my address. Yeah, yeah. No, she's not the person that was with my father when when my mother conceived me. So mm -hmm. therefore God I needed to show and I've seen him over the years, over the stages of my life, just showing up, showing up, showing up, mm -hmm. and showing off. And even so, he has he, he, he has um catapulted my family and my myself and family to another level that the same family members have to look on us and say, No man, this must be God. God. All right. So God is an awesome God, you know, and he works in mysterious ways. Share with us, let's get this big elephant out of the room because those watching you, I'm sure most persons know that you went to War 21. Why did you end up at War 21? I end up at War 21 because in 2008, mm -hmm. I was in my house and somehow this, as my brother would, would put it, because he saw it, he said there's a spirit that it came straight into my mother, straight into me, and then just started to just go off. In, in layman term, I went off, I went back and forth on the road. In fact, I remember I had on this multicolored thing over my head and I had on my mom's silk, silk top. Mm -hmm. And I was running up and down the road. I went on the, the main road of Maxwell Avenue. I was on Glen Road, mm -hmm. went on Maxwell Avenue on the main road. I remember going over to a Sabbath church that was on top of the church. And the spirit of suicide came across my mind. Just said, jump after when you just kill yourself. Mm -hmm. And I remember a hand just pulled me back with force and mm -hmm. says, no come down and I came down and I jumped in a gully and I was just stooping down there and I just began to just shake like a leaf and I kept hearing a voice saying I'm here with you and I'm here with you and another voice saying you need to die you need to die you need to die mm -hmm. and just two voices in my head mm -hmm. and people are looking for me and running up and down and when they finally found me mm -hmm. when they finally found me they started to put olive oil over my head the call for the pastor from my grandpa and my brother's um, grandmother church and he began to pray over me and that was just a whole story of it and I mean people who were not even saved was releasing the name of Jesus Christ with such force and all I could remember saying is Psalms 27 the Lord is my light and my salvation who shall I fear straight up to the university hospital so so okay so you have memories of really what took place everything i remember but had no control over your emotions or, or your actions no control over my actions what did the doctor say when you got there i was i was in like some kind of trance i was i, I was sleeping for three days mm. the doctors told me and my sister that i was sleeping for three days and when I regained consciousness and I began to tell them exactly what took place, like I tell my relatives and they said I couldn't be able to tell the doctor all of that because the doctor wouldn't allow me to come out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I would have to um, accept what they were saying and they, they were saying that I was, I was having a nervous breakdown, they're going to run some tests and they believe it's the same in this because um, my mom had a history of bipolar. She went to Bellevue in fact. So okay. they're trying to put both of us filed together to say this is is coming from a gene mm. and that was it so hmm. have you ever had any such episodes again no not not one such in fact there was a cycle there was i went after 2008 three years prior um three years after i i didn't experience anything and then 2012 that i had an epidemic and then 20 16 mm -hmm. and a little bit a flare one a flare wanted to uh, um rise about 2017 and i said no mm, this is going to be this 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 spirit has to has to go has to go has there been any form of deliverance since yes i have received deliverance mm -hmm. i received deliverance from 2008 i've been just seeking god in terms of a ministry and all that and I'd, I received some sort, of, some sort of deliverance from that stage on mm -hmm. then going over to a ministry because the Lord allowed me to go into a ministry that was very prayerful in 2015 mm -hmm. I met Pastor Otis Manning mm -hmm. and some deliverance took place right and then 
God personally allowed me now to be behind closed door and do some self deliverance on me. Mm -hmm. Then I had to renounce strongholds. I had to renounce entities because one of the things that people didn't understand was my family was seeking answers, and I was I was I was going to places that were demonic entities mm -hmm. that I needed to renounce their their contract with. So, so let me ask you. So, so, so as a matter of fact, before I go there, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. And we're talking with Letania Kenlock. I mean, her story is one of um, the, the occult, for want of a better word, um, witchcraft, uh, sorcery, being her family being involved in it, and how we are seeing the, the effects of it on herself and her siblings. All right. So persons watching Letania are going to be, I'm sure some are saying, witchcraft, foolishness. That's really a matter of bipolar or just real madness. But for you and I, we know better, right? We are, we are people of God. We understand that we see things from a different angle. This, your experience has caused you to write a book. And hold up your book so we can see. It's called, put it way up, girl, True Identity. Tell us about this, this, this book. So True Identity is a memoir about my life story and it's chronicled from a child up until being an adult. Mm -hmm. And the experiences that, that, I've, that I've experienced and have caused me now to be a woman of God of faith, a woman of God of authority, a woman of God that only rests in the pavilion of the Holy Spirit. So this book now entitles everything I've spoken about on the show, about going through um, different witchcraft entities, having been saved through Christ, having gone through different, um, let me see, seasons where I, I needed destiny helpers, that I needed people to be around me, that I could open to and trust to bring me on the life's journey that is really the mandate of Christ. So everything that I have been through, regain my true identity, regain a sense of freedom and just to explain my side of the story is really in this empowering book i want you to you said something earlier that we're gonna sort of you know close down on this you said that your family was sort of searching for for stuff and is that is that in terms of going to you know we're going to see us we're going to different see us to get stuff and that's one of the things that i know jamaicans were known for and within the caribbean we're going to see us we want to hear we want to know we want to um even this thing that they call um horoscope right right we want to know about right astrology we want to know about the future and that kind of thing yeah. listening to you we are now hearing firsthand that there are dangers in those things now, I want you to take two minutes and just talk to that woman, that man, that teenager that's listening to this program, some who have been terrorized themselves, members of your family who are going to be watching this and recognizing that, hey, we've been under a stronghold. We have been under an authority for years that is not of the Lord. Share with them how you were able to come out of it and how they can get their deliverance too. Well, one of the things that you have to um, somehow consciously understand and accept is that, listen, you're taking on an authority that is not is unlike God. And if it is that you have entered into a house of astrologers or psychic powers or whatever it is that is, un, as I said, unlike God, it doesn't entitle righteousness. It doesn't entitle holiness. It doesn't entitle you as a person having the love of Christ in you. Now, if it is something that's going to hurt, injure, or cause a loss in your family, or a loss on a whole, where you have nothing, nothing to regain, that means somehow you need help. And the help has come where you need to follow after Christ. Now, these spirits will suppress you. These spirits will oppress you. And they will kill, steal, and destroy your life. They will destroy you. So I am saying to that man, to that woman, to that young boy or girl, that listen, you can come out of the situations that you're in. 
You don't need a palm reader. You don't need a card reader. God is, is the biggest and the highest of them all. He's above every other name. And he will deliver you no matter how. Yes. Woman of God, thank you so much for sharing. It has truly been a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Remember, if you need um, to have your story aired, you can reach me, 1-876-856-5769. And of course, um, Latanya, I don't know if you are into, do you do any form of counseling or anything with persons who are struggling in this area? Oh my God, Simone. You know, it's yesterday I was talking about it. The Lord has placed on my heart um, to enter into coaching as a spiritual coach. Well, hear what? If you need to hear more, you can find Latanya's book on Amazon. And of course, you can reach out to us, reach out to MTM. They'll have a contact detail how you can reach this mighty woman of God now running demons out from out of um out of our lives. Thank you again. Remember, uniquely me is uniquely you.